Question 16. What is zone of equivalence? Answer. In this, ratio of antigen antibody is seen optimal which results in large multi-molecular lattice. Hence maximum precipitation is observed. Question 17. What are the applications of precipitation reactions? Answer. Precipitation reaction is the basic reaction for a number of techniques. It is less sensitive for detecting antibodies. Precipitation reactions in gels have several advantages rather than in liquid medium. They have forensic application in identification of blood and seminal stains. Question 18. What are immunodiffusion reactions? Answer. These reactions can be used to determine relative concentrations of antigens and antibodies to compare antigens and to determine the relative purity of an antigen. They are mainly preformed in 1% agarose gels. Question 19. Name the two immunodiffusion techniques. Answer. Radial immunodiffusion method and double immunodiffusion in two dimensions. Question 20. What is radial immunodiffusion method? Answer. It is used to qualities the antigen. Suitable dilution of anti-serum is incorporated in the agar gel. Antigen is added to the wells cut on the surface of the gel. As the antigen diffuses into the agar region, equivalence is established and ring of precipitation is formed. The area of precipitin ring is directly proportional to the concentration of antigen. By comparing the area of precipitin with the standard curve obtained by measuring the precipitin area of known concentration of antigen. The concentration of antigen in the given sample can be determined. Question 21. What is the limitation for radial immunodiffusion method? Answer. This method cannot the antigens present in concentration below 510 micrograms slash ml. Question 22. What is double immunodiffusion method? Answer. In this method, both antigens and antibodies diffuse radically from wells towards each other by establishing a concentration gradient. As equivalence is reached, a visible line of precipitation is observed. The patterns of precipitin lines that are formed when two different antigens are placed in adjacent wells indicate whether they share any common epitope or not. Identity occurs when two antigens share identical epitomies. Hence, the line of precipitation formed by them will fuse to give single curve line of identity. Non-identity occurs when two antigens are unrelated. The anti-serum form independent precipitin lines that cross each other. Partial identity occurs when two antigens share common epitope. The anti-serum forms line of identity with the common epitope and a curved spur with the unique epitope. Dope. Question 23. What is an epitope? Answer. The smallest unit of antigenicity is known as antigenic determinant or epitope. The part of the antigen at which the antibody reacts is known as epitope or antigenic determinant. It is a small area possessing specific chemical structure and stereo configuration on the antigen capable of sensitizing on immunocyte and of reacting with its complementary site on the specific antibody. Question 24. What is a paratope? Answer. The portion of the antibody molecule that binds to the epitope is called as paratope. Epitope and paratope determine the specificity of immunological reactions. Question 25. What are the forces that are responsible for antigen antibody reactions? Answer. The process that holds antigen antibody together is called nonspecific interactions. Intermolecular forces may be classified into four or one. Electrostatic bonds, hydrogen bonds, hydrophobic interactions, van der Waal interactions. Question 26. Explain in brief about electrostatic bonds in antigen antibody interaction. Answer. These are formed due to the attraction between opposite charged protein side chains. 
Question 27. Explain in brief about hydrogen bonds antigen antibody interaction. Answer. Reversible hydrogen bonds are formed between hydrophilic groups such as hydroxyl, amino and carboxylic group. Although hydrogen bonds are relatively weak, they play an important role in interaction of antigen antibody. Question 28. Explain in brief about hydrophobic interactions in antigen-antibody interaction. Answer. Contribute up to 50% of the total strength of antigen-antibody interactions. These reactions are found whenever the side chains of non-polar amino acids of antigen-antibody come together. Question 29. Explain in brief about van der Waal interactions in antigen-antibody interaction. Answer. Temporary transfer of electrons from one molecule to another will result in the force of attraction between them. This is seen when the interacting molecules come close to each other. Question 30. What is affinity of an antibody? Answer. The strength of binding of an antibody to a monovalent antigen or single antigenic determinant is called affinity of an antibody. 